and welcome to Wednesday's episode of the Literary Lutheran Reads a Book of Concord. Today we will finish Article 11, God's Eternal Foreknowledge and Election, and we will begin Article 12, Other Factions and Sects. This doctrine and explanation of the eternal and saving choice of God's elect children entirely gives God all the glory. In Christ he saves us out of pure mercy without any merits or good works of ours. He does us according to the purpose of his will as it is written. He predestined us for adoption through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 5 and 6. Therefore, it is false and wrong when it is taught that not only God's mercy and Christ's most holy merit, but also something in us is a cause of God's election on account of which God has chosen us to eternal life. Before we had done anything good, also before we were born, yes, even before the foundations of the world were laid, he elected us in Christ. And in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of his call, she was told, the older will serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. Romans chapter 9, verses 11 through 13. See also Genesis chapter 25, verse 23, and Malachi chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Furthermore, this teaching gives no one a cause either for despair or for a shameless, loose life. By this teaching, people are taught that they must seek eternal election in Christ and his holy gospel as in the book of life. This excludes no penitent sinner, but beckons and calls all poor, heavy-laden, and troubled sinners to repentance and the knowledge of their sins. It calls them to faith in Christ and promises the Holy Spirit for the purification and renewal. It gives the most enduring consolation to all troubled, afflicted people so that they know their salvation is not placed in their own hands. Otherwise, they would lose their salvation much more easily than was the case with Adam and Eve in paradise. Yes, every hour and moment. But salvation in, is in God's gracious election, which he has revealed to us in Christ, out of whose hand no person shall snatch us. John chapter 10, verse 28, and 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. If anyone presents the teaching about God's gracious selection in such a way that troubled Christians cannot get comfort out of it, but are pushed to despair, or if anyone teaches it so that the impenitent are confirmed in their sinfulness, then it is undoubtedly sure and true that such a doctrine is not taught according to God's word and will. It is taught according to human reason and the instigation of the devil. For as the apostle testifies, whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. But when this consolation and hope are weakened or entirely removed by Scripture, it is certain that it is understood and explained contrary to the Holy Spirit's will and meaning. This simple, correct, useful explanation has a firm and good foundation in God's revealed will. We abide by it. We flee from and shun all lofty, difficult questions and disputes. We reject and condemn whatever is contrary to these simple, useful explanations. Conclusion of the Controversial Articles so much for the controversial articles that have been discussed for many years among the theologians of the Augsburg Confession. Some have erred and severe controversies, that is, religious disputes have arisen in these articles. From our explanation, friends and enemies, therefore, everyone may clearly see that we have no intention of yielding any part of God's eternal, immutable truth for the sake of temporal peace, tranquility, and unity, which is not in our power to do anyway. Such peace and unity would have no permanence, since it is devised against the truth and for its suppression. We are even less willing to adorn and conceal a corruption of the pure doctrine and clear condemned errors. We do yearn with a heartfelt pleasure and love for unity. On our part, we are sincerely willing and anxious to advance that unity, according to our utmost power, by which God's glory remains unharmed. We willingly advance unity where nothing of the divine truth of the Holy Gospel is surrendered. No room is given to the least error, and poor sinners are brought to true, genuine repentance, raised up by faith, confirmed in new obedience, and justified eternally, saved alone through the sole merit of Christ. Article 12. Other Factions and Sects. That never confess the Augsburg Confession. Introduction. 
The sex confessions that have never confessed the Augsburg Confession that, and that have not been directly mentioned in our explanation are groups such as the Anabaptists, Schwenkfeldians, New Arians, and Anti-Trinitarians. Their errors have been unanimously condemned by all churches of the Augsburg Confession. We have not wanted to make particular and special mention of them in this explanation because at the present time this explanation has been our only aim. Our opponents have shameless mouths that have shouted allegations throughout the whole world against our churches and teachers. They claim that you cannot find two preachers who agree about each and every article of the Augsburg Confession, but that they, they are torn apart and are separated from one another to such an extent that they themselves no longer know what the Augsburg Confession is and what its proper meaning is. Therefore, we did not present this common confession briefly or merely by signing our names, but we wanted to make a pure, clear, distinct declaration about all the disputed articles that have been discussed and argued among the theologians of the Augsburg Confession. This has been the Literary Lutheran Reads the Book of Concord, and I wish you a blessed day.